Pardon me. And what is your current title or position? I'm a city consultant within the National Resource and Health Sciences yep. Division. And would you please describe your responsibilities and duties relative to the Sable Trail project? I'm um, part of the ERP team and is responsible for putting together the ERP application and interacting with the various experts. Mr. Dixon, you used a couple of acronyms uh, in your answer, so just for clarity and so we all have the same nomenclature, um, what do you mean by FDEP? Florida Department of Toronto. And what do you mean by PRP or ERP? Environmental Resources. Um, need to get you your binder. Do you have yours? No. No, that's... It's in there. It's in there, okay. Your Honor, uh, this is uh, tab six in the binder marked prima facie. And uh, please look, uh, Mr. Dixon, at Sable Trail exhibit for identification number six and identify that document. Uh, this is my current resume. Take a second and look at it and let us know whether you believe that it's a true or correct copy of your resume. It is a true and correct copy. Uh, would you please summarize your employment history relevant to this proceeding? Uh, I've been an environmental consultant for over 23 years. Uh, for the last 20 years dealing with the RPDs. Uh, uh, my employment with uh, started with environmental planning and analysis in Tallahassee uh, and continued with consulting engineering and science in Miami, which is where I started working with DRPs and continued on with environmental services out of Jacksonville and then uh, the last four and a half years with Cardinal. Would you just briefly elaborate on what you mean by uh, uh, helping applicants secure ERPs? Uh, whether it's uh, from a, a route analysis or a site plan analysis, we're asked to uh, take a look at a project and uh, help them identify the environmental constraints on the property and then uh, work through them by reviewing their site plan or the proposed project, identify uh, any impacts, work through the avoidance and minimization process while we're avoiding uh, the wetlands to the greatest extent possible and then minimizing them to the greatest extent possible. And whatever's left over constitutes uh, technically unavoidable uh, wetland impacts. And then we work through the application process and uh, maybe working with uh, engineers or other subject matter experts, uh, leading with the regulatory agencies, doing site reviews of the wetlands uh, and reviewing the application and uh, responding to requests for additional information. You need to speak up a okay. little so the court reporter can hear you. Please. Okay. <coughs> we actually just want to move it there you go. <laughs> and just approximately, how many ERP applications do you think you've worked on? Uh, well over 100. And for what types of projects? Uh, they range in all different types from single family uh, lots to single family docks to uh, pipelines, roadways, bridges, uh, all the way up to several hundred and several thousand acre subdivisions and uh, mitigation banks. <coughs> What was your role in preparation and submittal of the ERP application for the Sable Trail project? Uh, I was part of the ERP team that wrote the application and coordinated with the subject matter experts to pull together all the various appendices. Did you actually prepare uh, any parts of the application? Yes. Sir. And why is uh, an ERP required for the Sable Trail project? Uh, ERPs are required for projects that uh, are going to contemplate uh, including an operation of a stormwater management system and impacts in or over wetlands and Sable Trail has both of those. What specific parts of Sable Trail uh, triggered those uh, that need for an ERP? Uh, several of the compressor stations and uh, MNR stations are going to require stormwater management facilities and there are some select wetland built associated with those and in addition the uh, 
pipe itself may be uh, trenched through wetlands, resulting in some uh, impacts, either uh, temporary or permanent conversion from forest into elevation flow. When was the initial Sable Trail ERP application submitted? Uh, July 31st, 2014. Okay, um, I now would like for you to take a look at volumes one through three, pre marked as joint exhibit for identification number one, and ask you to identify that very voluminous document. Take a second. Chris, a fat book. I believe you testified that you did draft uh, portions of the application. Did you also edit other portions of the application? Yes, sir. During our uh, quality control and quality assurance process, I read through the application multiple times and provided edits and comments to all the sections. And did you also have firsthand uh, dealings with? those subject matter experts that were preparing the uh, information for the application? Yes, sir. We interacted on a regular basis. Uh, very briefly, would you just generally describe the contents of the original Sable Trail ERP application? Uh, it included Section A, which is general information, Section C, which is information related to uh, effects over wetlands and other surface waters, and Section F, which is for solid submerged lands, uh, also included an environmental considerations report, which outlined the current conditions of the project, the survey methodologies associated with the wetland uh, delineation and the listed species. Uh, also talked about the proposed project, uh, proposed impacts, and proposed mitigation. And then it included a multitude of appendices ranging from uh, AGC correspondence to soils maps, uh, listed species protocol origin of sediment control plans, HDD, best management practices. I'm sorry, did that last, did you say HDD? Yes, sir. H HDD is a horizontal directional drilling. It's a construction methodology that allows you uh, to install the pipeline without uh, surface ground disturbance except at the entry and exit points. Were there any pre-application meetings with DE prior to submitting the application? Yes, sir. there were multiple meetings. Uh, how many do you think? Uh, at least a dozen and probably closer to 15. And what happened at those meetings? Uh, we talked about the proposed project, uh, the route, uh, potential impacts, potential mitigation. Uh, DEP shared with us uh, key points of uh, concern, areas of focus, and the overall permitting process and timeline. Does the ERP submitted in July of 2014 also request authorization to use the state on sewerage lands? Yes. And does it seek uh, authority to actually construct the project or simply conceptual approval for the project? It's a construction permit for both the pipeline and the above ground facilities. Does it include a proposal to construct one or more stormwater management systems? Yes, sir. And 
How many? There are three uh, compressor stations and two <coughs> MNR stations that are proposed. And are they all located in the same water management district? No, so they're not. The uh, Hildreth uh, compressor station is located within the Swanee River Water Management District. The uh, Donnellan and uh, the compressor station and the Citrus MNR are located in the Southwest Florida Water Management District. And Reunion and Hunters Creek are located within the South Florida Water Management District. Does it make a difference what water management district these facilities are located in? Yes, sir. Under the ERP rules, we have to meet the uh, stormwater requirements of each one of the water management districts. Were those differences in design taken into account with the designs that were submitted as part of the application? Yes, sir. they were. Where in the application is the route depicted? Uh, it's depicted on various uh, drawings. Have a look. It's going to be listed on figures uh, 1.1-1, one, uh, one, which is the project location map, figure 2.1-1, the topo and section township and range map, uh, figure 2.2-1, aerial map, uh, figure 5.3-1, soils, uh, figure 5.4-1, the FNA map, and figure 5.4-2, the flux map. A couple more acronyms. Uh, you said FNA. What does that mean? Uh, FNA is the Florida Naturals Area Inventory. It's a uh, group that's run by Florida State University. It's a uh, database that they keep up of the biological resources across the state. And you also said flux. What does that mean? Uh, Florida land use uh, cover and forms classification system. It's a land classification system that was uh, originally created by Florida Department of Transportation. Binder, please. And look at uh, Sable Trail Exhibit 3 for identification and ask you to describe that. Just identify it. It's the proposed Sable Trail Pipeline project within Florida. Is that the same route that was in the original application? No, it's not. It's similar, but there are portions that have been modified since uh, the original application was submitted. In addition to the actual application form, uh, there are multiple appendices, tables, maps, figures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just explain briefly why Sable Trail saw the need to submit that level of analysis supporting the information, supporting the original application. Well, the ERP rule and the uh, ERP application are pretty uh, direct in what documentation you need to provide. And in addition, uh, based on our experience of uh, permitting uh, your projects within the state and the meetings with DEP, those were the items that uh, uh, we agreed upon that would be provided. And what was DEP's response to this submittal of the original application? Uh, they issued a request for additional information. Sometimes referred to as an REI? Yes, sir. And when was that uh, request for additional information uh, issued? It was issued on August 29, 2014. Um, is, are you referring to the first tab in volume four of uh, Joint Exhibit for Identification 2? Yes, sir. And does that appear to be a true and correct copy of the first request for additional information? Yes, sir. And again, just briefly, what types of information did DEP request? Uh, they asked for some additional detail on the pipeline drawings, uh, some of the uh, UMAM scores, uh, which is Uniform Mitigation Assessment Methodology, scoring of the current conditions of uh, wetlands to be crossed, uh, 
also ask for some elimination and reduction of impacts, especially associated with conservation easements, uh, FEP, Port of Trust East conservation easements, uh, and then easements within each of the water management districts, uh, some high quality systems, uh, a couple of questions on our wetland verification and mitigation plan, uh, our wetland restoration plan details, um, demonstration of the project will not cause adverse secondary impacts, uh, water quality and water quantity associated with the above ground facilities, and then some additional um, questions on sovereign submerged land and the public easements associated with that. And how did Sable Chair respond to that request for additional information? Uh, we provided uh, a detailed response including a revised permit application. Just to be clear, when you say a revised permit application, does that mean that you resubmitted the actual application form? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the second tab in volume four uh, and volume five through seven of what has been pre marked as joint exhibit for identification three and ask you to identify that document. It's lengthy, so have a have a good look at it. Okay, this is uh, the second tab in volume four and volumes five through seven of joint exhibit for identification three. appear to be a true and correct copy of that response? Yes, sir. When was it submitted? December 19, 2014. And in addition to the revised application form, uh, does it also include re responses to the questions contained in the first RAI? Yes, sir, it does. Were you directly involved in preparing uh, the revised application? Yes, sir, I was. I provided uh, responses to the RAI questions, uh, either directly or indirectly by reviewing and editing the responses that were provided, and the same with the application. And how did DEP respond to the submittal of this response to the first RAI? Uh, they issued a second RAI. And when was that issued? January 16, 2015. And for reference, we're now looking at the first tab in volume eight of what has been marked as joint exhibit for identification number four. And would you please identify that for the record? Yes, sir. It's a, a copy of the second RAI issued by the EP. And again, briefly, uh, what types of information does that RAI request? I'd ask for some clarification on elimination and reduction of wetland impacts at, at several of the uh, MNR stations, uh, some clarification on the secondary impacts, uh, questions related to car sensitive areas and the car's mitigation plan, uh, detailed questions on the water quality and water quantity associated with the above ground facilities. Some questions regarding the erosion and sediment control plan and um, uh, regarding how to set uh, the seasonal high water, uh, ordinary high water at one of the uh, proposed HCD under the solid smart plan. And how did uh, Sable Chair respond to that second RAI? Uh, Sable Chair provided a detailed response to the questions. 
me ask you to refer to the second tab in volume 8 and 9 and 10 of what have been pre-marked as joint exhibit for identification number 5 and ask you to identify that document. Exhibit include the supplemental information? Uh, it includes everything but the courtesy copies of the conservation easements. And again, just so the record is clear, was there actually a cover letter submitted transmitting that to DEP? No, so this was submitted directly uh, via the FTP site and we submitted an email to Lisa letting her know that the information had been uploaded. And what happened after that supplemental information was submitted to DEP? Uh, DEP issued a third REI. Uh, please have a look at uh, the first tab of volume 12 of what has been pre-marked as joint exhibit for identification 7 and identify that document, please. This is a copy of the third REI. How did uh, Sable Chair respond to the third REI? Uh, we provided uh, responses to the two questions. And let me have you please refer to the second tab of volume 12 of what is pre marked as joint exhibit for identification 8 and describe that document. Uh, this is a copy of the submittal for the uh, third REI response, which includes. Uh, our detailed responses, a uh, summary of the compensatory mitigation revised um, June 5th, and then uh, a revision to our cumulative effects analysis, and copies of the letters of reservation for all the mitigation credits. Uh, again, just to be clear, explain what you mean by copies of the letters of reservation for the mitigation credits. Uh, there were two different uh, mitigation providers. There is uh, mitigation marketing, which represents a number of the banks, and then also Upper Coastal and Old Florida Wetland Mitigation Bank. And Sable Trail Transmission uh, reserved the credits uh, by signing documentation, uh, putting a deposit down to reserve the credits. Trail submitted all the documentation 
necessary to constitute a complete application? Yes, sir. If I missed anything or the joint exhibit for identification one through eight, is that the entirety of the application submitted by Sable Trail? Yes, sir. Uh, now let's take a look at tab four of volume 12 of what's been marked as joint exhibit for identification 10 and ask if you could please identify that document. This is the consolidated notice of intent to issue the ERP and easement to use sovereign commercial lands. And did you receive that from DEP? Yes, sir, I did. And when did you receive it? On, uh, I believe it was July 10th, 2015. Are there, uh, let me strike that. Let me ask you to complete the, the joint exhibit for identification number 10 is Bates number. And if you would look at Bates number 36. <coughs> and identify what the document is. That's a record of the affidavit of publications within the newspapers uh, for the Ralph's Crossing. And did Sable Trail publish a notice of the consolidated notice of intent for the ERP and the easement in each of the counties traversed by the proposed pipeline? Yes, sir. Um, I'd also like to have you look at uh, table REI 10 D3 which I believe is part of the uh, response to the third REI. Yes. This is a table uh, that has that summarizes the wetland impacts and proposed mitigation. Uh, and with reference to that table, to what extent does the application propose any unmitigated loss of wetland function? Uh, they do not propose any unmitigated. Chosen for DDP. Uh, you indicated that there were uh, quite a number of pre application meetings for this project. Is that correct? Yes. And are pre application meetings required under the rules? Uh, they're not required, but they're recommended. Okay. And you took advantage of that? Yes, sir. During the uh, time when the pre application meetings were occurring, uh, did the project propose a project change in any manner? Yes, sir, it did. Okay. And can you just briefly describe it? Uh, there were several uh, reroutes that were incorporated into the project for various reasons, some for construction, some for environmental reasons. And was one of the environmental reasons avoidance and minimization of impact? Yes, sir. Uh, you indicated that um, in the, in the uh, first request for additional information that there were a number of factors that uh, or subjects that were covered. Uh, I didn't hear it, but was karst, sensitive karst areas covered in that first uh, REI? Yeah, 
Yes, there was. And in your response to that, you provided information relative to that issue, didn't you? Yes, sir, we did. Okay. And then in the second REI, you indicated that that sensitive car issue was raised again and you responded again. Is that yes, sir. You indicated that um, the project, um, uh, that there is no unmitigated uh, impacts to weapons. Is that right? Correct. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, is that unusual, sir, to have no mitigated impacts to wetland? Objection, Rob. This characterizes testimony. Unmitigated loss. He said it uh, as I recall it. Do not that the project does not propose any unmitigated loss of the wetland function. Is that correct? Yes. Sir. Is it unusual to have no presence of any unmitigated loss at this stage? Could you rephrase the question? Is that unusual to have uh, to reach a conclusion that the, that there, there's no findings of any uh, unmitigated loss? to the wetland function. No, it's not uh, Is it common? No, it's not David, you need to speak, speak up. Uh, it's not uncommon. It's not uncommon. It's not uncommon. No. Uh, your resume shows you were a project manager and a lead ecologist in many similar projects. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, did those projects uh, specifically involve gas Natural gas pipeline? Uh, several have, yes, sir. And by several, uh, how many do you mean? Specifically listed on my resume? No. Just in general? Based on uh, your recollection of your experience? <coughs> Probably 15 pipe projects. And you recall uh, the different distances that those projects covered? Yes, Linear sir. Miles? Yes, sir. Several uh, were. Two to three miles in length, and several were probably in the 45 mile range. And I do have a little trouble hearing you. You said somewhere two to three miles, and several. So well, in the 45 mile distance. So 45 has been the, the high end of your prior experience? Yes, sir. For a pipeline project, yes, sir. Uh, you recall the, uh, the diameter of the pipeline used in the 45 mile project? Uh, I believe it was in the 36 inch range. Uh, where is that project located? The Jacksonville area. Do you recall whose pipeline that was? Uh, it's an extension of a TECO project. I'm sorry, extension of what? TECO. Can you spell it please? T-E-C-O, also known as People Gas. Was that the 36-inch uh, inner diameter or the outer diameter? I'm not sure. Are you sure it was 36 inch? I'm not 100% positive, no, sir. How about the other projects? Did they include, uh, recall the size of the uh, diameter pipe? Uh, they range depending upon the project. And what's the uh, low end? Probably 6 inches. And how about the high end? Would be 36 inches. Have you ever been the experience with a uh, Aside from that one in Jacksonville, that 36 inches? Uh, I don't recall the size of all the pipes, no, sir. Is the size of the pipe a important consideration to you in doing what you do? No, it's more of what is the uh, impact from the construction. Well, uh, how wide of an area does a 36 inch pipe need to be uh, cleared? So it can be sub submerged? Uh, it varies, but I think the typical distance is 20 feet. How about a six inch pipe? Uh, I believe they use a 10 foot. So 10 to 20 foot could have a significant difference in the impact, wouldn't you think? Yes. 
but it is your testimony that you don't consider the diameter of the uh, diameter of the pipe. I consider the footprint of the construction. The footprint. And by footprint, uh, how would you define footprint the way you just used it? Uh, it would constitute your workspace, both your permanent clearing and your temporary for your workspace, where they're going to stage equipment, where they're staging the pipe. Sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm having trouble hearing you. I have to the quarter is to destroy the way. It, it's the, the footprint of the project would be uh, in, any area that's being cleared for construction, and that might be temporary or permanent associated with the staging of equipment, staging of materials, um, stockpiling of. Uh, dried materials or, or spoil uh, and the like. All right. Well, wouldn't the footprint, uh, wouldn't the size of the, the diameter of pipe have an impact on the footprint? They could, yes, sir. Uh, have any of the, your past projects have natural gas pipes that cross over other natural gas pipes? Yes, sir. Is that common or uncommon? Uh, as far as my knowledge, it's common. For example, did the 45-foot Jacksonville pipeline cross over any others? Not to my knowledge, no. Did you say you did about 15 projects of natural gas? Yes, sir. About how many of those included uh, crossovers? I'd say roughly half. All right. So when you say common, you're referring to <coughs> Do you recall uh, mileage intervals or approximate mileage intervals at which the crossings may occur? Junction, Your Honor, relevance and outside the scope. <coughs> it's, going, it's going to be hard to get outside the scope uh, <laughs> because it's basically presenting the entire permit file. Uh, I'll allow the question. Yes. Uh, do you recall on um, question? Can you read that question back? <laughs> do you recall the mileage intervals at which these crossings may occur? For this poor sample trail? Uh, no, I was asking about a prior project. For example, the 45 mile project did not have any crossings. Right. How about on the, the half of the 15? Rule of. Uh, any recollection as to the mileage interval crossings on um, anyone in particular? I, I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. All right. Uh, if you could give me an example of one of the seven or eight projects that included natural gas pipelines crossing, uh, well, can you give me one example? Yes, sir. We did uh, the Indian River uh, County project, which is uh, Winter Beach to Bellsmere. It's a small pipe project. And uh, it tapped off the uh, FTT uh, or gas transmission pipe and then was jack and board underneath uh, the FTT pipeline from their compressor station. So it would have been close to the beginning of the project. Would have been close to the beginning of the project, you said? For that project, yes, sir. Did you, do you mean that it was just one or two crossing? Yes. Your Honor, I, I'm going to object to Candy. We seem to be going down the road of the numbers of crossings and how frequent they are. There's nothing about crossings or crossings over in the petition. So I'm just curious where we would seem to be headed with this. What compare, how can we make a comparison if there's not one in this proposed project? The uh, Southern Natural Gas Company, Your Honor, has a pipeline that runs parallel uh, largely to the proposed pipeline by Sable Trail. And it's the proposal, on my understanding, that those two pipelines cross each other at an uh, uncommon rate, at a rate that is um, certainly Southern Natural Gas is concerned about. And I believe it's relevant to the, uh, the gentleman was uh, stated that he uh, has reviewed the entire permit process uh, and responded to all res uh, questions by uh, DEP and that he finds that there's no uh, no inherent risk, and I think that No, Your Honor, he did not testify that there's no inherent risk. Uh, all right, but uh, I can hear that there's some question about the uh, factual presumption in your question, which is that uh, in this proposed project there are some uh, crossovers. Okay, is that true, Mr. Dixon? Yes, sir. All right. 
if you if it's true, then why can't he can ask for comparison purposes? Well, I think that he needs to relate it to something that's relevant to the ERP, Your Honor. Well, I think he's trying to get there. Mm -hmm. um, Your Honor, it's also not in the petition. Yeah, yeah. Your Honor, there's nothing check. in the petition on this. Uh, <coughs> the, the material facts and dispute are barely a page, two pages long. And there's nothing in reference to crossovers or, or environmental impacts associated with crossovers with other facilities. Well, uh, speaking on the um, crossover is included in the risks that are generally stated in the petition. And this is a, a huge part of the concern. Over the 180 miles or so, there's uh, an unprecedented number of crossovers for an unprecedented size pipe and its diameter, which the gentleman doesn't seem to know whether it's the inside or outside diameter. That's a huge concern, you think it would have been mentioned. Um, Not your honor. Let me turn to the tissue if I may. Let me, yeah. I'll have to look at the tissue. Judge, Judge, I also point out that this seems to be going for pipeline safety, which your honor has ruled is not an issue in this ERP procedure. Okay. Well, I don't know, the, Mr. Chisholm, I don't know the uh, scope of that uh, preemption. So that would have to be. I don't really understand what's forward to know how to cause this stuff. But, Your Honor, if he's going to, does a crossover have any unnecessary and unmitigated environmental impact? It's a relatively easy question to ask. And that would be, I think, the only way a crossover could be relevant under the ERP. The petition only references crossings in terms of rivers and streams. Let me uh, also point out, Your Honor, the, the my understanding, and I was going to ask the witnesses whether the crossover requires a different means of boring through the course, or boring through the limestone, whether it can be uh, drilled down or uh, cut. And I believe that where it crosses over, there are different requirements to invasion into the earth, which I believe is relevant to the, the permit to his testimony. Let's start with the uh, petition. How it's raised in the petition. Thank you. Discussion as to standing for the material facts of dispute don't start until, until page 19. Well, I think it's inseparable that a owner who claims standing for drilling on his land and crossovers occurring on the land is substantially affecting the owner's uh, uh, interest is inseparable. Right. From what happens below the land? I don't see how a counselor can use this witness to prove up his kind standing. Or is it facts and evidence that there's a crossover on one of his client's properties? Well, I mean, it's fact. It's in the, but it's, in the, it's not fact. Facts are what are produced here in under both and subject to cross examination. Right, but it, it's those it, things that are stated in the petition are not fact. Let me ask the witness: Is it stated in the application that there are crossovers? Whether that's a fact. I was uh, having, uh, not heard an objection. I'll begin on page eight. You speak of a drilling would emerge Sewanee County on his land. Drake uh, speaks of the drilling of pipeline installation. Uh, that, in fact, is the witness who we're calling at um, this afternoon. Both witnesses are mentioned there on page eight. And we speak on uh, petition speaks on page nine. The experts, including 
the Department of Environmental Protection's expert geologist, uh, stating that the karst terrain and spring sheds of North Florida should be avoided by Sable Trail Pipeline, and that river crossings are most sensitive of all. It cites to the, uh, the petition cites to uh, chapter seven, uh, 373, which in and of itself uh, speaks of uh, harms that should be addressed. <coughs> the harms are escalated by the fact of these multiple crossings. I mean, if we're going to look at the petition, we should look at the unprecedented facts of it, not simply that it's been approved. Right. I'm just looking for something that says I don't like crossovers. And he, he, each of the sites that he's referred to refer to crossings of rivers, Your Honor, not crossovers of other lands. We speak of the, the sinkholes on page 10, not being conjectural or hypothetical. And of course, the argument is that the construction will uh, exponentially increase the sinkhole activity in this region. Uh, one natural gas pipeline in such an area is a, is a, is a risk. One on top of the other is uh, an exponential risk. That's argumentative. And assumes facts that are well, not in evidence. Well, we got to uh, glean from the pleadings. He just responded to the objection at this point. It's not a point. Sure. He, he, he can make a case, but he can make allegations. It's in the four corners of the pleadings. Um, not in the four corners. I'll, yeah. I'll let the, I'll let the, you may inquire but, was it, about, us? You may inquire about uh, impacts uh, uh, and, and, and if, if, you, if this witness or another witness, uh, if you want to pursue with them the uh, peculiar or uh, exacerbated problems associated with uh, how a crossover will, what a crossover does to the Aquifer, uh, we, can, we can deal with that. I mean, I'll allow that. But uh, just, you know, how many crossovers this has compared to other, uh, a general question like that, I don't think is relevant. Let's let's deal with uh, particular impact that you're, you're calling into question, or you want to raise to, to my question. Understand the uh, ruling. Uh, it's not a comparison test. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, um, Mr. Mr. Dixon. Uh, relevant to the Sable Trail pipeline, not to any of the other projects you've worked on. Do you know how many crossovers there are between it and other natural gas pipelines already in existence? Yes. Do you have an, 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 any idea? We also must stay within the impacts that uh, affect um, the coalition's members. It doesn't matter whether there are 25 crossovers down Osceola County. How many crossovers the Sable, proposed Sable Trail Pipe has in Swanee County? Objection, Your Honor. The witness just testified he didn't know how many crossovers there were. Did you have any questions, Your Honor, about Swanee County? I'll allow the answer. Uh, I do not know. Do you know if there are any? I don't know. When you prepared the when you participate in the preparation of the application for the Department of Environmental Protection, did you give consideration to the fact of other natural gas pipelines already in existence? Uh, proximity to the stable pipeline, for example. 
we relied on the subject matter experts uh, that were dealing with those issues yesterday. Do you think there's any consideration? Should you relied on the subject matter experts? Yes, sir. As part of the FERC process, they asked you to look at co-locating pipes next to existing facilities where applicable. <coughs> Can you define a subject matter expert for me? Uh, they would be a person that, that was working on the project in terms of either whether it be a, uh, handling the first submittals, uh, the core submittals, the ERP submittal, or whether it be someone dealing directly with cars or groundwater or stormwater. All right. Were there different subject matter experts in this project for cars and stormwater, or would that be one of the same? Uh, there were different subject matter experts. And uh, what did you find in giving consideration to the findings of the subject matter experts with relation to the sable trail proposed pipe in the existing pipes? Pipelines. We determined that the route was, the, basically the route was the route, I guess. If, that, if I'm understanding your question correctly. Uh, I'll hurry up repay the question so you understand it. Uh, my understanding of your response was that the considerations you gave to the presence of other natural gas line, uh, natural gas pipelines, was that you took into consideration reports of subject matter experts. Yes. Okay. And in taking into consideration uh, how did the subject matter experts' findings weigh in on your conclusions? that the route of the pipe was appropriate. That the route of the pipe was appropriate? Uh, to be co-located next to those existing facilities were proposed. Was it appropriate to, if I understand correctly, a little trouble here, it's appropriate to locate the, this The pipe. Sable Trail Pipeline next to those existing pipe facilities. Did the subject matter experts with regard to Suwannee County, um, I'm sorry, you already answered that. What would be uh, an example of inappropriate? Your Honor, I, I, I need to check. I don't think he testified that there was anything that was inappropriate. So the question mischaracterizes his testimony. I'm trying to understand the witness's testimony that it was appropriate. Your Honor, the department's going to I would say it's not the answer is not responsive. The response to the objection. The department's going to object on relevance grounds because I think this only uh, the witness testified that this was associated with the FERC submittals and not with the ERP submittals. Um, he answered that he relied on some other people about uh, the appropriateness that that particular question of appropriateness. So what would be inappropriate, yeah, I guess he would have to rely on their some, some, that same kind of input, which he didn't get in this case, so it's, I don't see how he could answer the question. All right. Uh, I'll ask it different if I may. Uh, can you explain to the, um, to the tribunal the difference between open cut and boring? Open cut would be a form of construction where they trench uh, the pipe, stockpile material, lay the pipe in, and backfill the trench. And uh, boring would be where they take the pipe and drill it underneath uh, either a roadway or some other resource, uh, and it would exit, and then they would string the pipe back through. Is one more costly than the other? Yes, sir. Which one is more costly? Drilling is much more costly. When pipes cross each other, is that done using the open cut or the boring method? Uh, typically a boring method, either HDD or jack and bore. I'm sorry? Jack and bore. Jack and bore? Which is another method for uh, drilling a pipe. So would it be accurate to say in proposing a planned pipeline installation that considerable cost could be made by crossing pipes rather than running in parallel? Relevance, Your Honor. Cost of the pipeline isn't an issue here. <coughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
was the, uh, I was, I uh, apologize, I didn't return to the room before the testimony began. Was he asked to speak as an expert? Uh, so far, he's, well, I guess he's been asked uh, questions that call for opinion. So he is an expert witness. So do you have an opinion about whether it would uh, consumable cost can be saved by crossing pipes rather than... The question was whether that was relevant. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, well, the irrelevance is... Um, I, I'm going, my intent here is, throughout this proceeding is to show that there is uh, risk being taken to the extent that the affected homeowners are not substantially protected by the agency. And that begins with the interaction with uh, Mr. Mr. Dixon. And I'm trying to learn more about that interaction. Uh, we did look at his resume. It is part of Exhibit 6. And I think it's fair to ask him what he knows. Well, Your Honor, if we're here to talk about whether or not homeowners are sufficient. It's, I'm, I'm sustaining the objection on the question of the cost of the pipeline. Uh, the cost of this technique. Mr. Dixon, this uh, pipeline, does it involve all three of the things you mentioned, trenching, drilling, and the jack and the board? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. When is jack and board uh, a recommended technique? I believe when it's a smaller crossing or it's a more compliant crossing. Okay. Let me ask the parties about uh, much. You, you probably have quite a bit more examination. Uh, I have some. Well, what I'm trying to get to is whether we should break for lunch now or uh, we try to conclude this examination. I think uh, probably lunch would be a good idea. Hey, Your Honor, we prefer, unless there's going to be lengthy cross, to go ahead and finish the witness and then break. That's my purpose, too. It depends on how much is left. That's well, I, I mean, I, how much time does... Uh, more than I, are you going to take more than a half hour? No, Your Honor, but we have a specific time reserved for two witnesses that the court agreed to take out of order, beginning at one. All right, I thought there was one, but anyway, if we're going to, that means we have to get back here by one, so we better break. Uh, we're adjourned now for 45 minutes, start up again at one o'clock.